In this video, I'm going to briefly go over some things I think would be useful for new players to know. This video is not going to cover everything, and it's not going to be super long. Hopefully, I can keep this fairly short to give you exactly what the key things you need to know to get in and play the game. So first off, one of the things that can be very confusing for a new player is how do you pick what class you're going to play? Now, there's no right answer for this. All classes are good. In fact, I play all three, but depending on your play style, you may want to start out with one versus the other. So let's first start with the Hunter. So this is my main, but again, I play all three. Hunters are stealthy and mobile and get into and out of trouble quickly, but sacrifice some squishiness in the process. Their abilities revolve around the dodge that can allow them to get powered melees or to reload their weapons. Also, this kind of certain class trees allow them to become invisible. This class relies on guile, stealth, traps, and misdirections to get the job done. Again, it's more like a ninja that it's sneaky and can really be stealthy, sneak around, and basically mess up your fire team. This is heavily, heavily utilized in various PvP modes in Destiny for that reason. The other thing is their jumps are a little bit different. In some cases, if you're in some PvE content, their jumps aren't as great, but the one thing that's nice about their jumps is that you can actually change direction midair, which allows you to really get past some of your opponents. In PvE play, they can be the hero often with their invisible ability, which will allow them to either get close to an enemy and take it out, or to go to a teammate that is down and revive them quickly and get out of trouble. Hunters also have some good add clear and high DPS options as well within their subclasses. Warlocks, this is my second favorite class. If you want a well-rounded character, this is probably the easiest one to start with. Think of a warlock as a space magician. They have probably the most variety in their abilities and are a good balance of offense and defense. Their class ability rolls around a rift that can help their teammates. It can either heal them over time or increase their weapon damage. Warlocks have some unique abilities that you can utilize in PvTP, but this class shines in PvE, especially in endgame PvE where there are support abilities that can help a fire team stay alive or buffed. And just like the Hunter, they have other subclasses that will allow you to do really good ad clear and really, really good DPS. Titans. Titans are very offensively focused with some good defensive abilities as well. Their class ability revolves around a barrier shield that can help them or their fire team. It comes in two varieties, one is tall and blocks fire, and one that is smaller that you can peek over and can speed reload for your fire team. Titans can be very strong in PvE, especially with certain supers, and their power melee that you can shoulder charge enemy guardians. In PvE, they're very good at ag clearing with their melee based attacks and roaming supers. They also have strong defensive abilities with their barriers and some of their supers that are focused on defending the fire team. Again, there is no right thing or wrong thing as far as a class. Each class has a subclass that covers defense, boss DPS, ad clear, team support, and PvP focus abilities okay, across all of the different characters. I would try them all, and if you don't want to think initially, probably go for Hunter if you're PvP focused, and Warlock if you're PvE focused. For all of these classes above, you have a variety of grenades, melee, class abilities, and supers. Most of these are pretty self-explanatory, but your super defines your guardian. You get this base back based on a timer, based on mods and modifiers that you have in place and can be something that protects your team, buffs your team DPS, or does very large DPS to a single boss, or allows you to clear enemies out quickly. So now that you've picked a class, let's talk about the, the basics of PvE combat as you prepare to play the game. If you're not familiar, PvE stands for Player vs. Environment, and it's basically instead of PvP, where you're playing against other players, this is where you're playing with all the adds and bosses and enemies that you have in the game. First off, Destiny is a game about guns. There are three basic weapon classes. Kinetic, which do extra damage to enemies without shields, but do not do elemental damage. There are energy weapons that do elemental damage and extra damage when that element matches the shields of an enemy. It basically pops the shield and does extra damage. And then heavy weapons that have limited ammo, have energy affinities, and do a ton of damage. You can have one of each of these weapons available at the same time. So. You can have more in your inventory, but you can only have one active at a time. You can also only have one exotic weapon up at any time. Ammo types are divided into primary, secondary, and heavy. Primary ammo is unlimited, and again, you don't get bricks for this because it is isn't limited on weapons, where secondary and heavy require acquiring ammo in the game in the form of bricks. Primaries are your main weapon of choice, with secondary doing more damage than primaries, and of course, heavy's doing more damage than either one of those. Now that we've mentioned burns for weapons, Let's briefly discuss burns in the game period. There's Solar, Void, Arc, and Stasis. On the armor side, you have five slots for armor. These armor pieces can increase your stats, which influence how quickly your grenade, melee, class abilities, and supers come back. They also can affect how many hit points you have, how quickly you recover damage, and how fast your character can strafe in combat. 
All of your pieces of armor have burns that influence the mods that can be equipped on the armor. These armor mods have an incredible effect on how you can play the game and allows you to ultimately customize your character the way your playstyle is. I won't go over the details of how builds work, but if you're interested, I have a really good video on build crafting. You can check this video out. Weapons also have mods that can give you a leg up in your competition. Armor weapon mods are obtained from vendors and certain activities. As you want to get into higher tier content, power level will become important. Your power level is an average of all of your highest gear available on each character. Now, one thing to keep in mind with this is that your power level will influence how much damage you can do to enemies and how much damage they can do to you. And in some cases, will lock you out of activities. Just playing the game will grant you increased power level into what's called the soft cap. Once at the soft cap, power for rewards in areas will get you to the hard cap. Getting past that to your pinnacle cap in each season will require you to do pinnacle activities. This only really matters if you want to play higher end content. To level your individual gear, you can infuse higher level gear that drops into your favorite guns and armor. If you want an in-depth overview of how these levels work, check out this video. Over time, the power levels may change, but the concepts remain the same. While we're on power level, let's briefly talk about how the season, rank, and XP work. You gain XP by playing the game. That's simple. Over time, this XP can allow you to unlock items on your seasonal pass, which include mods, ornaments, weapons, materials, and more. This XP can add additional power levels to your power level we mentioned above, which will help you get into higher tier content. If you want a more detailed information on how XP works, check out this video. Now that you understand some of the basics, let's talk about vendors and activities. Each major activity in the game generally has a vendor. This vendor has weapons and armors you can purchase as well as rewards as you upgrade their level and then a reset to start the process over with. You can also pick up bounties from each that give you a chance at various rewards, including XP. Finally, as you level up, you get Ingrams from those vendors that reward armor or weapons from the vendor's loot pool. The main social space in the game is a tower, and that has a lot of vendors. There's Lavala, who's a vendor for strikes. Strikes are similar to story missions and can have different levels of modifiers, but with increases in those, you can gain more advanced rewards, but they also come with the need to fulfill certain requirements, including power level. Shax is a crucible vendor. He works like Zavala, but covers the primary PVP or player versus player modes within Destiny 2. As a reminder, PVP is where you play against other players that you match make against, and there are a variety of different PVP modes that you can get in and play to again get the rewards from Shax. In addition to Shax, there's a vendor, Saint 14, who houses the ultimate endgame competitive PVP activity in Destiny called Trials. Trials only is active from Friday reset to weekly reset on Tuesday. These daily and weekly resets will change activities in rotations as well as rewards from various activities. Drifter represents the mode called Gambit. Gambit is a combination of PvP and PvE modes where you kill enemies and deposit moats to advance the game and send blockers to the bank of the enemy PvP team on the other side. At various times in the game, you will invade to the other side to kill the PvP players that are on the other side trying to do the same thing. In other words, trying to kill enemies and bank moats and again advance towards the end of that mode. In addition to activity vendors, you also have Banshee. Banshee is a gunsmith who sells upgrade modules that can be used for infusion and has a number of quests and bounties as well as a rotation of weapons. Hawthorne gives you a clan banner and rewards if you're in a clan. So if you're in a clan over time, you'll actually get additional rewards, additional powerful rewards that you can use in the game. So again, that's the benefit of getting into a clan besides just the fact that you can match with people that you know. She also sells rally banners that can be used in various PvE modes and in raids to be able to top off your supers and your ammo before an activity begins. Ada One is a vendor that unlocks the ability to convert existing armor sets into ornaments that can be used on any armor piece. So basically, you can keep the same armor piece using various activities, but if you want to change the cosmetics, this is one way you can do that. She also sells armor mods on a certain rotation. Amanda Holiday is a vendor that allows you to purchase ships and sparrows, as well as mods for each. Your ship is what you use in orbit to get between planets, and your sparrow is what you use to quickly move between areas on the planet. Think about it as your personal car on the planet. Rahul decrypts engrams that you get from activities. Tess is the vendor in the game store system, which in Destiny is called Eververse. Eververse allows you to buy in-game cosmetics, including ships, sparrows, and ghosts, and other things. A ghost is what you pull up to interact with the rest of the world environment, 
but can also have mods that buff your character's ability to gain materials and XP. You can also buy emotes that can be used within the game. You also in the tower have your vault, where you can store extra items and again transfer items between characters. So if for instance you have all your slots filled in your characters, you can put things in your vault to save them for safekeeping. And you can even lock them within your vault. The postmaster is where items go if your character is full and you get a drop in an activity. So instead of going to the vault directly and putting something in, if you happen to be in the world and say your energy weapons are full and you get a drop of an energy weapon, that's going to go to your postmaster. One thing to keep in mind is if you let too many items go to your postmaster, it'll basically start pushing them out from the first one that went in and it'll basically delete it. So that's something you want to keep in mind. Go into your postmaster and make sure you're deleting things when you get a chance. Xur is a vendor that shows up on a similar schedule to Saint-14 and sells a variety of exotics each week. This can be a way to get a better stat roll on one that you have or to find an exotic you don't have currently. Xur rotates on a regular rotation. It's difficult to find where he's going to show up. So I actually usually put out weekly videos on this. So check out this channel if you'd like to find out what he's selling and where he's located this week. Speaking of exotics, there's a kiosk in the tower where you can obtain exotics that you don't have, but with a cost. We haven't really talked about exotics, but exotics are armor and weapons that you can use that have a dramatic impact on your gameplay. They have very unique abilities and sometimes can be game breaking. And in some activities, they can be things that people request that you bring in with you. Exotics, you can only equip one piece of exotic armor and one exotic weapon at a time on each character. But again, they're very powerful. It can allow you to further customize your character, even on top of the mods and other things and build crafting you can do in the game. There is also a quest kiosk that you can go to pick up quests you may have abandoned. Before we move off activities and vendors, let's. I want to discuss a few things that we might have left out. The ultimate end game for Destiny for PVE are six player activities called raids that often require you to be mic'd up in a fire team. In fact, most cases you're going to need to unless you're really good or know the activities. These activities are incredibly fun and difficult, but with really good rewards. They often require you to be higher power level as well as destroying many enemies and solving difficult mechanics and puzzles that require coordination. Raids can seem difficult, they can seem hard, but they are the unique element of Destiny. And if you are trying this as a new player, if you're trying to get up and level up, you can do something like that. Set that as a goal. Every player should try a raid sometime within their Destiny career. On planets, there are public events that anyone can join in and have heroic or non-heroic variants that gain you XP and reward drops. These rotate across the planet every few minutes and you can see them on the map. There are lost sectors also that are on various planets. Again, you can see those on the map. These reward loot for taking on some mid-tier bosses. There are legendary and master versions of those lost sectors. And these, if done solo, are the only way to obtain certain exotic armor that's in the game. These also have modifiers and power level requirements similar to strikes. There are also various champions you have to take out, and the, those three are Barrier, Overload, and Unstoppable that can only be stunned with specific type of weapons depending on the mods and the season you're in. These champions, also you can find other PvE activities like raids and strikes. Barriers can shield other enemies, and an stun can regenerate health. Unstoppables don't regenerate health, but will move at you aggressively until you stun them. Overloads are the most annoying in that they warp around the battlefield and can regen health if you don't stun them quickly. Again, stun them quickly so you can take them out quickly. There are a number of planets in the system that have their own vendors, bounties, and activities. These can change each year depending on what has been vaulted in Destiny. I won't go over them for that reason. Vaulting is a mechanism where some portions of the game that are older will be retired from time to time to fit new activities in the game. Finally, there's the in-game economy that can be rather complex. Glimmer is the primary currency in the game. You have to use it in almost every transaction. You get this just like XP by playing the game and also from currency exchanges in the game. Silver is a currency that is essentially money you pay in the game to buy items in Eververse. Legendary shards are used for many transactions and can be attained in currency exchanges or by breaking down legendary gear you have in the game. Bright Dust is a material you use to purchase items from Eververse without actually actually have to spend silver or money. Each planet has their own materials that can be used for upgrades in the game. You can farm these from nodes in each planet or purchase them in currency exchanges. Upgrade modules are what you need to upgrade and infuse guns and armor to increase power level. Finally, some of the last materials you'll have are enhancement cores, ascendant shards, and enhancement prisms. These are used for doing various upgrades within the game. All of these materials we talked about can either be attended from planetary 
rewards from currency exchanges, from bounties that reward these, or for certain activities that give you these as a reward. Now, before I go, one of the things I did want to talk about is some things that can make your life a little bit easier. There are some good websites and resources you can use to enhance your gameplay within Destiny. One of those is Destiny Recipes. When you're preparing for a new season, it actually gives you checklists to determine what things you should save. It also has a vault cleaner that will give you advice on how to keep your vault clean. It's a very useful tool. There's Braytech.org. Braytech is an incredible tool that can basically give you checklists to determine what you need to do each week, can give you an idea of where your triumphs are and how you're tracking those, can take a look at your collections, and can do a variety of different things. Basically, anything within Destiny 2 that you want to keep track of on your character and just say, hey, how am I doing on this? This is a really good source to look for that. Destiny Item Manager. Destiny Item Manager is basically a way that you can manage everything that's on you and within your vault. You can move things. So let's say you have a weapon, you want to move it to your warlock, you want to move it to the vault. This is a great way to do that. It has both an app and website version. And there's also some more advanced queries you can do it to look for specific roles or specific perks on guns. So again, really good if you're trying to manage your guns and your armor. There's light.gg. Light.gg is basically an enormous database for Destiny that primarily goes over what's in seasons or armor or items. So basically, if you go on Google for the most part and you search a specific item within Destiny, you're gonna be taken to a light.gg page that's gonna have a picture, all the stats, all the information about those things. So again, it's really, really useful. So guys, that's the video. Again, my goal in this video was to give you what I thought were the key things a new player would need to know because a lot of things within Destiny are really confusing. I didn't want to make a multi-hour video guide that took your entire day. I wanted to give you what are the things that you need to know to get started in the game. And then as you progress, you can look at things. For instance, I have a guide that talks about everything that's changed in the last two or three years of Destiny. Once you finish this and maybe get into the game for two or three weeks, check that video out. That'll have more advanced information than what I put in this in this guide, and it's much longer. But again, it has some very detailed information. Again, if you're new to my channel, one of the things I've been really digging in lately is trying to help those returning and new guardians that are coming to Destiny and make sure that they understand how to play the game because it's very, very com uh, complex, especially you part-time guardians who don't get to play every day. So again, check out my other videos on my channel. Jump into my Discord. I'd love to have a discussion with you about what things you'd like to see in new videos or what things were not clear in this video. We could talk about that a little bit further. Feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guardians in the tower.